afternoon, namaste. Uh, Your Excellency, Ambassador Ma, Mr. Masasigawa, um, First Secretary of Japanese Embassy, my friend uh, Kyoko Hamada. Um, so he will certainly join with us today uh, in between that program. So taking this uh, opportunity, uh, I think uh, we won't, uh, we, it's not better to spend much time uh, to, uh, before the uh, lecture, real lecture uh, starts. So I would like to uh, request Ambassador Gawa to speak. Namaste. Former Home Secretary Dr. Uh, Govindra Kusumu, former NID uh, head, Derry Sharma, um, Professor R.K. Dahal, uh, Dr. Uh, Kadoka Kesi, distinguished uh, assistant and a faculty student, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to or express my sincere gratitude to the Dr. Kadoka for inviting me to the, this uh, MIRD class as a lecturer. It is my uh, great honor to have a chance to introduce uh, the current Japanese foreign policy and the Japan-Nepal relations to the excellent student of MIRD. Uh, before <coughs> entering the main subject, let me introduce my personal history in Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Japan. Perhaps uh, many students here have interest in working in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or international organization such as the United Nations. So I think it may be useful for you to know the uh, personal history and the experience of one diplomat. Um, I was born in Kof City, which is situated in the center of Japan in 1953. Kof City is in the north of uh, Mount Fuji and uh, surrounded by the big mountain, just like Katmandu. My father was an official of Japan National Railway Authority, and when I was eight years old, he was moved to the Fujisawa city, which is uh, near Tokyo and uh, faced with the Pacific Ocean, and my family followed with him. In 1974, I entered Tokyo University and majored in English and American literature. I wished uh, to be a diplomat and wanted to go to the United States. So I started to study for the uh, employment examination of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. The exam was very difficult. The subject of exam are many, such as Japanese constitutions, economics, international law, administration law, and the science of finance, history of Japanese diplomacy, and so on. The acceptance rate is less than 10%. I studied very hard and uh, spent two years. Finally, I passed the examination. I entered MOFA in uh, April uh, 1979, just after my graduation. In MOFA, every freshman would be allocated one specific language, and uh, he or she was expected to be a specialist of that language. I don't know the system of uh, your Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs still use such kind of the method. And there are more than 40 languages to be allocated, such as English, French, Russian, Arabic, Chinese, Spanish, Korean, Hindu, Bengali, Sinhala, and the Swahili, Thai, Myanmar, Vietnam, Czech, and so on. <clears throat> the allocation of language was unilaterally decided by MOFA, and once the language was decided, it's uh, very difficult to change. The allocation of language was uh, very important for a young diplomat because the language would decide the full career of the diplomat. If you allocated Swahili language, you have to spend half of your, your life in the tropical African countries. So at the time, I was very optimistic because my major was English literature, so I believed that uh, 
uh, authority would allocate me English. However, I was wrong. I was allocated the Chinese language, which I had nothing to do with uh, in my life until then. And I was ordered to go to China to study. I was so much disappointed, to tell the truth. And uh, I wanted to go to the United States because the United States was the most advanced country in the world. Today, China is the world number two economic giant and the infrastructure of the big cities of China has achieved a remarkable development. However, in 1979, China was one of the most behind and unknown countries in the world. It was only four years since the uh, devastated the Great Cultural uh, Revolution was ended. In 1980, I followed the order of MOFA, Norway, and went to uh, Beijing as a student to study Mandarin Chinese. I stayed there for two years and uh, underwent many difficulties, as same as, same as the other foreign student uh, in China. However, looking back on, these, on those days, I feel happy because I met a lot of good people in China and had many unique and exciting experiences which I could not have in the other part of the world. I met several Chinese real friends at that time, and still I keep contact with them. Um, after finishing two years language study, I was assigned to the Consul General of Japan in Hong Kong from 1982 to 1986. And after that, I was transferred to the Shenyang, which is the big uh, industrial city in the north of China, uh, to establish a new Japanese Consul General there. After that, I came back to Tokyo and I worked in the uh, China division of MOFA headquarters. Job uh, in Tokyo was extremely hard. I worked from the 8 a.m. to 1, p 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the midnight every day because there were so many issues to be resolved between Japan and China. One of the biggest issues I dealt with at that time was the Tiananmen Square incident in 1989. <coughs> I engaged in the evacuation operation of Japanese citizens from Beijing. In 1991, I was transferred to Taipei and came back to Tokyo in 1994. <coughs> My new job in Tokyo was concerning Japan US Security Treaty. Why? It was also very hard. I visited Washington DC almost every month for a negotiation <coughs> with the Defense Department of the United States. <coughs> After that, uh, I worked in the China Division, Overseas uh, Public Relations Division, Chancellor of the Embassy of Myanmar, uh, Director of Japan-China Economic Division, Special Coordinator of MOFA Personal Division, and now the Ambassador uh, of Japan to Nepal. This is my personal history in MOFA. I spent almost 20 years in China related to business. Besides that, I was engaged in the various kinds of jobs, such as the security issue, public relations, economic cooperation, and the personal, uh, 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 personal <coughs> arrangement. I'm very happy uh, to be assigned as ambassador <coughs> to this little country in my last stage as a diplomat. Next, uh, let me explain the our recognition of the current internal situation uh, surrounding Japan. As you all may know, Japan has been a peace-loving nation for nearly 70 years since the end of World War II, and it has made significant contribution toward the peace and the development of the world by protecting the freedom, democracy, uh, fundamental human rights, and the principle of rule of law. In, in the 21st century, a big 
a change of the power balance among the nation take place. The rise of the newly developing country, such as China and India, including their presences in the international society due to their rapid economic growth. China, in particular, still maintains its high GDP growth rate and expands its political influence and military power rapidly. As for the United States, although its comprehensive national power is still strong and it maintains the leading position in the internal society. However, its influencing power is relatively going down. As a result of the change of the power, any single country cannot play a dominating role among the international society. And it becomes difficult to achieve consensus to settle down any international dispute if it involves several countries which have different national interests. Second, in the uh, 21st century, the globalization and the technical innovation, especially in IT area, are progressing rapidly and there is no turning back. Interdependence among the countries are facilitated. At the same time, influencing power of the non-government entities, such as multinational corporations and NGOs, also become much stronger. This situation contributes to the economic growth and the democratization. However, on the other hand, it produces various kind of new risks and makes them complicated. There are numerous global issues should be resolved soon, such as international terrorism, nuclear disarmament, climate change, and so on. However, existing decision-making system of international society seems not to function well for searching the appropriate settlement on these issues. And at present, no single country can secure its own peace by itself. Japanese uh, diplomacy. The uh, security environment surrounding Japan is in Asia and the Pacific region is also becoming much harder. 29th of June and the 2nd of July this year, North Korea launched the several short-range ballistic missiles toward the Sea of Japan. And the Jap Japanese government immediately strongly protested to this behavior, which is clearly against the UN resolution. In the East China Sea, a certain country's government vessels have repeatedly intruded into Japanese territorial water surrounding the Senkaku Island and its government aircraft have frequently violated our airspace. Senkaku Island, uh, clearly an um, inherent part of the territory of Japan, in the light of historical facts and uh, based on the international law and the islands uh, under the valid control of Japan, there exists no issue of territorial uh, sovereignty to be resolved concerning the Senkaku Island. This is the clear position of our government. And looking to the, uh, in the South China Sea, tension between China and the Vietnam and the Philippines are escalating at present. Japan's government will not accept any attempt to change the current situation by use of power based on unilateral insistence. <clears throat> Japan's diplomacy, uh, under the, these circumstances, Japan's foreign diplomacy prioritizes three uh, policies in order to protect and uh, enhance its national interest. The first one is strengthening of the Japan-US alliance. In this challenging security environment, the Japan-US alliance 
the linchpin of Japan diplomacy would be further strengthened. Since the conclusion of the current Japan New Year Security Treaty in 1960, Japan and US have developed a firm allied relationship based on the democracy, protection of human rights, and the rule of law. Today, as the strategic environment of the Asian Pacific region is uh, undergoing the significant change, the importance of the Japan-US alliance is getting stronger, not only for Japan, but also for the peace and the stability of the region. Here, uh, let me explain the current determination of Japanese government concerning the light of collective self-defense. Uh, the definition of uh, collective self-defense is to use force to defend allies which is under attack. This is a part of a self-defense right admitted by the international law to every uh, sovereign country. However, uh, Japanese government, based on the interpretation of its pacifist constitution, used to think that force can be used only in the case of armed attack against Japan itself. As security environment surrounding Japan has become much harder recently, in some occasions it is possible an armed attack against a foreign country could uh, actually threaten Japan's survival. Under such recognition, Japanese government has come to a, a conclusion that use of force to the minimum extent should be permitted under the current constitution in case the arm attack occurs against a foreign country which is in a close relationship with Japan. In such case, use of force are permitted only when Japan's survival is threatened and the life of Japanese people are in danger, and there is no other means available to repel the attack. This is what we decided. As a result of this determination, the deterrence power of the Japan-US security arrangement will be enhanced and the peace and the stability of Asia and the Pacific region is strong thing. The second important policy uh, is uh, <clears throat> that the uh, emphasis on the cooperative uh, relation with neighboring countries. The peace and <coughs> stability in the region is vital to the prospection, protection of national interests. Japan is determined to strengthen <coughs> the relationship of trust with neighboring countries such as China, Korea, Russia, ASEAN, and SAC. Japan is working on enriched relationship with its neighboring countries, including Nepal. In this occasion, I would like to uh, touch on the Japanese policy to China. There exists a strong relationship between Japan and China in a broad range of fields, such as trade, investment, culture, and the human exchanges. And China is one of the most important countries to Japan. Japan's government strongly hope to maintain and develop the good friendly relations with China. I think there would be some conflict between Japan and China because our political and social system are very different. We think it is most important for both countries to make effort to find an appropriate settlement to each problems and not to make them to interfere the four Japan-China relations. This is our, point, our, our, our standing point. And the third uh, uh, prioritized diplomacy of Japan is to strengthen the economic di diplomacy to revitalize the Japanese economy. The protection of free trade is a pillar of Japan. Japan strate strategically 
promote the bilateral and multilateral high-level economic partnership. Japan will strengthen its support for the overseas expansion of Japanese companies through utilization of the official development assistance to facilitate the economic dynamism of foreign nations. In this context, I believe Japanese ODA to support the economic development of Nepal. This is the uh, uh, outline of current Japanese foreign policy. If you have uh, any question, I will answer later. Mm -hmm. And uh, next, uh, uh, <coughs> um, uh, let me refer current Japan-Nepal relations. <coughs> Japan and Nepal established the diplomatic relations in 1956. Since then, we maintained a good friendly relations based on the mandatory as a human exchange, such as loyal families of both countries, mutual visit of the politicians and the high rank government officials, uh, Japanese mountaineers who loved Nepal and many Nepal students in Japan. At present, there are more than 5,000 uh, Nepalese students in Japan. This may be the fourth largest number of the foreign students in Japan, after China, South Korea, and Vietnam. Last year, about 25,000 Japanese tourists visit Nepal, and the number of the Japanese tourists will increase more. Concerning the economic relations between Japan and Nepal, unfortunately, it is far from satisfactory at present. Japanese direct investment to Nepal is only 45 cases, and the total amount uh, is uh, US dollars 2.3 million. The size of each investment is small. I think it is uh, my homework to invite a Japanese <coughs> big investment to Nepal during my tenure. Trade between Japan and Nepal is also low profile. In fiscal year 2012, import from Japan was uh, 53.5 million US dollars, and the export to Japan is only 11 million US dollars. Import from Japan is almost five times bigger than the export to Japan. As a result, the trade defi deficit of Nepal was US dollars 42.5 million. To encourage the export to Nepal uh, products to Japan, Japan's government has already adopted the uh, preferential tariffs treatment to Nepal. Almost 7,000 industrial products and 2,000 agricultural products to, of Nepal can be exported to Japan on the basis of duty-free and quota-free. Japanese market is open to Nepal. I expect more effort of uh, Nepal businessmen to boost uh, export to Japan. Japan's government supported the for Nepal uh, 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 to facilitate the peace process and uh, uh, democratization. We sent uh, 24 Japanese self-defense force staff to the UN meeting to observe the peace process from 2007 to 2011. At the first Shia election in 2008, we sent uh, 24 uh, election observers. We are supporting the Ministry of Law and Justice and the Supreme Court to establish the legal systems. We are supporting to expand the capacity of the mass media in Nepal. At the second CA election in 2013, we uh, <coughs> provided 1.5 million US dollars to procure the necessary equipment, such as polling boxes and uh, seals. And we send uh, several observers to the election. I was the chief of Japanese observer uh, team and visited the sighting polling uh, station in Kathmandu Valley. At that time, uh, I uh, really felt the enthusiasm of the voters. Uh, they have uh, strongly uh, wished to participate in national policy through the elections. And uh, uh, election uh, was uh, conducted 
uh, by and large in the manner of fair and free. And the uh, <coughs> Japanese government has continued uh, uh, official uh, development uh, assistance in various uh, fields since 1969. The amount is yen long, is uh, 640 million US dollars, and the grant is uh, 2 billion US dollars, and the technical cooperation is 600 million US dollars. Japan is still one of the top donors supporting Nepal. The Japanese government is focusing on three major issues for the economic cooperation to Nepal. One is the poverty reduction in rural area. About 66% of the population is engaged in the agriculture in Nepal, but the productivity of agriculture is very low which occupies only 35% of GDP. We are supporting the farmers to improve their livelihood by teaching agricultural skills, building an irrigation system, and uh, constructing uh, roads and bridges. Second is uh, to facilitate the peace uh, building process and uh, uh, democratization. We are supporting the uh, central and the local government to expand their administration capacities. As I already mentioned, we supported the Minister of Law and the Justice and the Supreme Court who are improving the, their legal system in Nepal. The third is the uh, construction of social infrastructure for balanced and sustainable uh, economic growth. We are supporting the government in the field of the transportation, electricity, improvement of the urban uh, environment, and the disaster prevention. Um, next, I pick up uh, several current infrastructure building uh, programs uh, supported by uh, Japanese government. And, uh, this one is the uh, Shinduri Road, so-called BP Koilara Highway uh, construction. As you all may know, this road is uh, 106 kilometers from uh, Baldivas to uh, Durikel as an alternative road of Trip 1 Highway to India. It will be completed in March next year. And uh, some Nepal people criticized uh, that uh, this road is too narrow. Yes, this road is very narrow. It is composed of the only two lanes, and they're not so wide. However, please look at uh, this picture carefully. Uh, this road is constructed mainly on the steep hillside, and all slopes besides the road are processed by the concrete and the iron bars to prevent uh, landslide. And we constructed the drain uh, trenches and the pipes all along the road to, dr to drain the water away. In other words, this road was a very high quality road and the durability is uh, very long. Completion of this road not only bring the expansion of traffic from Kathmandu to India, but also uh, contributes to raise the uh, living standard of farmers living along the road. Formerly, the farmers have no means to convoy their agro product to Kathmandu market, but after completion of this road, they can easily access the Kathmandu market and they can get the cash income. The next one is that uh, Melamuchi water uh, supply project. The uh, construction of this facility started in February 4th this year after 12 years interval. This is a corporate finance uh, project between ADB and the Japanese government. We are, cons uh, con we are constructing the water treatment plant with the capacity of uh, 85 million liter per day and ADB side constructed <coughs> the 30 kilometers long water uh, diversion tunnel from Meramuchi River to the water treatment plant. 
I attended the earth broken ceremony of the uh, plant in Sindurja. We expect uh, enough and clean water will be provided to many households in Kathmandu Valley within two years. Uh, this is the 140 megawatt uh, Tanafu Hydro Power Project. Uh, construction has not uh, started yet. The picture is the, the place we will construct uh, 100, 140 meters down. This is a, a short, uh, this is a storage type plant so that it can generate uh, uh, the electricity during dry season. Next one is a uh, plan of renovation of uh, 70 kilometers uh, between 70 kilometer road between between Srivinayak uh, uh, and Durikap. We already constructed the Katmandu Bhaktapur road and the BP Koirala Highway will be completed soon. This road uh, in picture will uh, connect uh, uh, these two roads. After completion of this road, the Japanese supported road link from Kathmandu to Bardivas is completed. Uh, JICA is conducting the uh, preliminary uh, study now. Uh, next one is the Nagadona Novise Tunnel construction project. We will support to dig 2.3 kilometers tunnel in this area. This will be the first traffic tunnel in this country. This will resolve the traffic jam on Puritipi Highway around the Tankot area. And uh, this is the last one. This is a Pokhara water supply project. Uh, not uh, started yet. We will support to uh, uh, construct a big capacity water treatment plant at Pokhara. So, uh, I will uh, conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Please introduce yourself and ask questions in brief. Your Excellency. First of all, let me express my sincere gratitude and thanks for your excellent and informative lecture. And we are extremely highlighted through your lecture. Your Excellency, I would like to draw your attention uh, regarding the current amendment in the Jap present Japanese constitution and its implication to Japanese security. Thank you. We didn't touch anything about the, the, our constitution. We just uh, changed the translation. And uh, as I explained that uh, the the right of the uh, collective uh, self-defense is uh, admitted by the international law to every country. But uh, because of our pacifist constitution, up to now, the government uh, decided not to use such kind of collective uh, self-defense uh, defense right. But uh, uh, now we are looking at a uh, uh, very uh, radical change of our security surroundings we decided we just change, just to make a small change of our translation of the uh, constitution. This is the, within the uh, range of the self-defense. We, uh, uh, to some, we just, uh, uh, under the several very severe conditions, uh, the Japanese government can use our power to uh, protect our allies under the uh, army attack. That's all. The has interest in three M's of Nepal. The three M's includes monarchy, mountain, and monks. And among three M's, one M has gone. That means after the abolition of the monarchy, uh, we have a kind of uh, doubt that has the interest of the Japan to Nepal gone down? Is the, uh, is the relation of the, the way Japan is to look at the Nepal, has it gone, has it changed? Interesting. Three M's. <laughs> OK. Uh -huh. Three M is uh, the company of the sound the tape, right? OK. Uh, but uh, of course, the the relation will be changed. The the now the as you mentioned, the three M is three very important the uh, our issues. But uh, uh, I've been here just uh, eight months. But uh, during this eight months, the uh, political uh, the development of your country is very remarkable. Um, actually, the, as I mentioned, 
the last time second CA election is, uh, was uh, conducted uh, uh, very successfully. And then January, you formed the second CA uh, uh, after the uh, two years interval. And then February, uh, the uh, uh, coalition cabinet led by the Dr. Sushil Koirala is formed. And uh, 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 almost of all the major parties agreed to promulgate <coughs> the constitution within one year. The Japanese government welcome uh, such uh, political development and we will support uh, the, your uh, democratization and the nation buildings continuously. And uh, such kind of uh, 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 the uh, development uh, of your country will affect the, our relations. Now, as I mentioned, there are only 45 small uh, investments uh, here. Only 45 uh, small investments from Japan here. But uh, uh, during uh, these eight months, many Japanese big enterprises visited Japan embassy and asked us the uh, investment situation of this country. That means Japanese enterprises have a very strong interest to invest here. Now, they are just uh, uh, looking for the opportunity and they investigate uh, your condition of uh, or investment. But uh, sooner or later, I think that many Japanese enterprises will come here. That will change uh, our relations uh, very large scale, I think. I want to get some idea about Japan's stand towards uh, Korean response towards Japan-Korea relationship. <laughs> so, South. Of course, South. <laughs> so, actually, the, the, uh, we, uh, we look that South Korea is a very important partner and a very uh, good neighbors. Uh, even though the, we have some, some, and we are sharing the same uh, uh, cultures and uh, uh, same uh, uh, just uh, belief. We both of, both country uh, make much of the democratization and uh, uh, and uh, market based uh, economy. Uh, but uh, we have several problems. Uh, but the uh, uh, same as uh, uh, China, the, uh, we have to uh, 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 try to the, uh, seek the very appropriate settlement of each problems. And uh, such kind of problem uh, should not influence to the fold our relations. This is our uh, uh, intention. What economic policy Japanese government formulated and implemented after the um, devastating uh, condition during the Second World War oh, okay, to okay, make okay. it one of the most powerful economy in 21st century? And what lessons can we, Nepalese authorities, can learn from that? So, as you know, the Japan is a, a, a country which does not have any natural, natural resources. We are lack of the petroleum and the iron or some kind of minerals, uh, and the agricultural product is far from the uh, uh, satisfied our uh, requirement, our demand of the people. So we have to depend on the uh, trade to foreign countries. So the, after the World War II, our economy is just uh, the trade-oriented economy. And uh, uh, because of the lack of the national resources, uh, we developed uh, uh, just uh, technology. We are focused on the developing the technologies. So this is uh, our uh, major point. And now, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned in my lecture, uh, Japanese government uh, very strongly uh, support the, our uh, enterprises to uh, go to overseas investment. Question is, like uh, it is often said that Japanese people they are very good at innovations and making and learning from mistakes. So, what in policy levels Japan has made changes after the Fukushima disaster? The Fukushima, uh, the uh, nuclear power plant issue is uh, very uh, devastated and uh, very sad uh, uh, accident. So, the Japanese government just uh, making some uh, new standard how to uh, operate uh, our nuclear power plant safely. 
actually there, there are so many Jap there are so many nuclear power plant in Japan. We depend uh, formally we depended uh, uh, 30 percent of our need of the our electricity uh, on the uh, nuclear power plant. We stopped everything. Now, no uh, 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 nuclear power plant in Japan operated. Now, so after they established uh, our safety standard and. Uh, we have to uh, make the uh, appropriate laws and regulations. After that, we will restart, I think. My today's question is, uh, would, you, uh, would you explain a bit more in detail about the support to establish legal, legal system and media capacity building in Nepal, please? Mm -hmm. Along with some specific examples of the outcomes, which is briefly noted down on slide number seven provided to us. My second question is that, uh, do you think, Your Excellency, that is it the failure of Asia and world on the regard of dealing with North Korea in case of establishing the democratic system in that country? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we supported uh, the capacity building and the uh, uh, legal system improvement uh, to the uh, your Ministry of, of Justice and Law and the Supreme Court. Uh, one specific uh, example is that we are supporting to establish a new you are, uh, 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 criminal court. So uh, according to my understanding, that you have a civil court and a criminal court, but based on the, the Marikain uh, uh, law, it's a very old, 200 years ago. So. Marikain. 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 Marikain is court based on the Hinduism. But uh, the, your government recognized that uh, that kind of law should be uh, revised or established a new uh, law uh, depend on the democracy. So the Yaba government is uh, just uh, starting to draft the new uh, civil code and the uh, 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 criminal code. And uh, uh, according to my understanding, the British, uh, they are supporting to uh, uh, establish the uh, civil court, and the Japanese side is supporting the, to establish the new uh, 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 criminal court. The, they will, the Minister of the uh, Minister of Law and Justice will submit uh, their draft uh, soon to the, your legislative party, I think. And the uh, second question is, uh, North Korea, yes. The, we also uh, hope the, the democratization of North Korea, and uh, uh, we strongly hope that they will uh, change their status to the uh, peaceful or under democratic countries. But uh, now, between Japan and North Korea, there is one very big problem. This is abduction problem. Have you ever heard that? The, from the 1960 to 1970, the Korean government abducted many Japanese citizens to the North Korea. And uh, when the, our prime minister, our former prime minister Koizumi visited the North Korea, at that time they admitted that crime and apologized. But the solution has not come. They made, they made a very big promise that they will investigate that abduction uh, victims. But they only uh, returned only five uh, persons. That's all. So the, we, uh, of course, we are not satisfied with the, the, their reactions. So we suspended the, uh, the support, or uh, uh, on the, not only support, we, we impose a sanction to the North Korea. This is one thing. Second is that their uh, uh, development of the nuclear weapons and the missiles. It's, uh, we, we cannot accept that kind of the behaviors. So we uh, now the, uh, impose a sanction to the North Korea. So at present, no way. Uh, I would like to express my sincere thank you, Mr. Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador Ogawa, and uh, for his uh, informative uh, lectures and inform uh, interaction with our students. Uh, last uh, again, I, I would like to request our uh, Vice Chancellor, Mr. Dr. Hirawadri Morrison to give his concluding remarks, and uh, thank you very much once again. Good afternoon. His Excellency, Mr. 
Masa Si Wagawa, Ambassador of Japan to Nepal, Coordinator of MIRD, Distinguished Participants, Faculty, Students, Ladies and Gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank His Excellency, Mr. Masashi Ogawa, for accepting our invitation to deliver a speech on Japanese foreign policy. I hope His Excellency's speech will be a great source of inspiration for our students to understand the foreign policy of Japan. Foreign policy and diplomacy are quite indispensable phenomena to protect independent countries' national interests, particularly a country like ours. So the foreign policy of a country should be visionary and sustainable in order to formulate such policies and in-depth research and studies such as an academic center is required, which can contribute significantly. Realizing the inadequacy in understanding the varieties and complexities of contemporary uh, international relations and diplomacy, Tribune University has launched master's program in international relations and diplomacy. The mission of the program is contribute contribute Nepal by producing skilled human resources in international relations and diplomacy. It, it also has the vision to enhance the formulation of stronger foreign policy of the country. As a pioneer program dedicated to the teaching and research in international relations and diplomacy, MIRD is expected to develop as an academic platform for academics and, part and practitioners working in the field of international relations, foreign policy, and diplomacy. Among other attributes, this program has been hosting the guest lectures from renowned academicians, diplomats, politicians, among others. The MIRD has also planned to send students for uh, intensive in government agencies, NGOs, and INGOs, and diplomatic missions. Similarly, the department has planned to operate student exchange program with reputed universities, research institutions, and specialized uh, training institutions of Jap Japan and elsewhere. His Excellency and ladies and gentlemen, we are looking forward to work with the Embassy of Japan the university and the research institute in Japan, which focuses their research on international relations and diplomacy. Once again, thank you for all, uh, all of you, your effort to make this program successful. Thank you.